On today's episode of Fit Happens, we'll be taking a CrossFit class, looking at what personal training can do for you, looking at virtual fitness, and also doing some exercises in the garden at home. Hi, and welcome to Fit Happens the show where we help you increase your fitness levels and reduce your fatness levels. I'm Chris Saremba and I'm joined by uh, Nicola Fustel and Keith Cormican. Keith, uh, tell me a little bit about your fitness history. Well, my journey into health and fitness has come slightly different to most people. I grew up in an area which was highly unwell. You know, my family weren't bringing broccoli to the table every night and we weren't watching health and fitness videos mm -hmm. growing up. It'd be great if I grew up in a place where that was the case. That wasn't the case, it wasn't the case for me, and I'm sure it wasn't the case for many people watching the TV show. Um, I've come from a family of a history of high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, but I use that as a catalyst to actually take charge of my own health and become fitter for myself and for the rest of the family. Also, the fact that my dad had a stroke last year, I realized that I had to up my own game 100% and be healthy for all the rest of the family, because if I let my own health go down, then I'm gonna be no good for anyone else. So by being healthy for myself, I was actually being selfing for other people, not selfish, like most people think, you know, if you're just being for your own sake. So it was really the, the family history of, of poor health and poor fitness that, that drove you to want to increase your fitness and health to, to, to very high levels. Absolutely. I, I saw what happened to them and I didn't want that to be happening to me. So now I take charge of my own health and I look after everyone else for the sake of that. And I don't want to be old and dilapidated. I want to be fit and healthy until the day I die. So you're known these days, I think, probably mostly as a sports nutritionist. Yeah. What drove you to the, the nutrition side of the business? Well, years ago I was an actor and then that led into fitness modelling and I got into, into shape for a certain photo shoot. People were then coming to me saying, how did you get in shape for that photo shoot? I'd like to look the same. Um, I wasn't massive or anything, but I was fit and healthy. So I started designing diet plans and fitness regimes for people in the UK and all over the world helping them to get in shape and help them to, to lose weight and lose body fat. And it's, it stemmed from there. Now I've, I've made a full-time living from it and I'm actually loving it. That's great. Keith, thanks very much. You're welcome. Well, I've done most things, I think, in fitness, but amazingly, one of the things I've never done is CrossFit. And that's what I'm about to do right now here uh, at the White Noise Gym in Staines. Now, I know CrossFit involves dumbbells. and I'm very, very familiar with dumbbells. Spent lots of my life playing with dumbbells. But it also involves doing things with huge tires, flipping tires over, which is something I've never, ever done. And I'm looking forward to doing that later on in the class today. So find out how I get on uh, as I enjoy my very, very first ever CrossFit session. Paul, you're the owner of White Noise Gym here in Staines. Uh, it's a gym that I know is specialising in CrossFit, isn't it? It does. We've been uh, doing CrossFit for about two and a half years. Right. Um, we originally started in Chertsey, which is just down the road. We moved um, here to this site. Um, we've grown in size over the last couple of years. Uh, the premises we've got at the moment is about 1,500 square feet uh, on the ground floor, plus we've got um, upstairs as well, which has got uh, massage beds. So our main core of exercises is CrossFit, but we have uh, Olympic weightlifting as well. Uh, and the strongman um, sort of side of things, which um, works with CrossFit quite well. With CrossFit, as I think I understand it, the different people are working out together, but they're doing different exercises in parallel, a bit like circuit training. Is that, uh, is that a fair comparison? Um, I think it is fair to, to uh, compare to circuit training. Um, generally, what we try and do is I try and get people to uh, be doing the same um, piece of training uh, as a group. Um, it depends on the size of the group. So uh, you're limited to how many people you can have doing one drill, uh, just with, this, with the amount of um, uh, gear you've got. Um, so typically, on a very large group, you may have some people working in racks, some people working on the floor, and then some people um, on the CV equipment. And then you can you can uh, then you can rotate that. So you can use a certain structure, like a so called an EMON, which is every minute on the minute. It's handy for very large groups. Mm -hmm. So you have a certain amount of exercises. Um, everyone has to complete. Um, within a set minute, you typically have a rest period built in there. So you may have uh, 10 squats, no, uh, five squats every minute on the minute. You do your five squats, that may take you, may, may take you uh, 20 seconds. Then you re-rack the bars and you would rest 40 seconds before moving on to the next station. So you may have like large, large stations. 
And how do you cope with people of different abilities, different strengths, different uh, yeah. cardiac capacities? Um, everything can be scaled. Right. So you put a workout on the board, um, you have a set weight that you'd call an RX weight. So the more experienced people would try and go for the RX weight. Um, anyone who's relatively new to um, uh, CrossFit uh, or new to the gym, we would uh, scale down the weights for them, scale down the reps for them. Uh, what we try and do is get everyone as exhausted uh, as everyone else at the same time. Uh, rather than some people kind of breezing through the workout and then others uh, uh, really, really struggling. So you want, you want people to be experiencing the same thing. So Jade, how long have you been coming to CrossFit? Um, I've been a member here for about a year and a half now. Um, it's good fun. And what made you choose CrossFit out of all activities out there? Uh, there was an offer on at this gym, which I got involved in, and I, I loved the community feel, made some good friends, um, like feeling fit, like feeling strong. It's a bit, just a bit of an all-rounder. So what sort of benefits have you noticed since coming here? Um, I've gained a lot of strength since I've been a member here. Um, started entering some competitions, uh, feeling much fitter. Makes me think more about what I'm going to eat. Uh, I've got more energy, sleeping better. It's, it's yeah, benefiting me everywhere. Really. So would you recommend CrossFit to other people? Definitely, definitely. I've been trying to get my sisters to come down and my friends. They're all a bit nervous, but once they get, I think once they get down, they'll realise that, that it's a good fun year. Uh, we try to keep a competitive element within the CrossFit sessions. So what we've got on the wall is uh, a PB board. And the PB board is split into age categories. It's also split into lifts. You've got the basic power lifts in there, which are all used in CrossFit. You've also got the Olympic lifts, which are used in CrossFit quite a lot. And um, the, Olymp the um, strongman lifts as well. So log, clean, press, axle, yoke. We try to get the members to beat each other. So if one person comes in, for instance, if I come in and beat um, TY with 181 kilos on a deadlift, I can get the chalk rubber, rub him off, put my score on, put my initials on, I'm good to go. So he will come in aghast that someone else has managed to destroy his score. So that was my first ever experience of CrossFit. It wasn't quite as I expected. I thought we'd be doing some tyre flipping, got the tyres out, but in the end we didn't do that because we concentrated on purely leg workouts, doing lots and lots of squats and lots of running as well. But it was great. Um, I think I'm going to be back. Um, not so sure about Nicola? I'm definitely going to be back. Right. It was challenging, yeah. And So personal training is an important aspect of life in fitness these days. I'm a personal trainer myself, I've been a personal trainer for a couple of years. I'm joined by someone who's been a personal trainer longer than me. His name's Matt Lovett from APS Fitness. Matt, welcome along. Thanks, thanks for having me. So my personal training is really targeted at people in the areas of uh, late 40s, 50s and beyond. And here you can see me training a couple of my clients, Dion, who's in her late 40s, and Sean, who's in his mid-50s. But Matt, you, you train people who are of all age groups, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've trained people from the ages of kind of 9, 10, up to uh, about 75. And you've got your own personal, train, personal training studio that you work in, I think. Yeah, yeah, we've had our own gym uh, for the last five years now. Right. So how do people find you, and how do they find you both as a business and find you as a particular individual? Do you, do you advertise locally, or is it through reputation and word of mouth? It started as in kind of we canvassed the whole area, giving out flyers in shopping centres, going door to door. Um, and we, we brought a couple of people with us uh, when we arrived, clients we'd already had. Um, and then it kind of grew through word of mouth, mainly. Right. So what do you find most important to your individual clients? When somebody comes through the door, what's the first thing you say to them? Hello, usually is the first thing that we say. Uh, then they kind of tell us about why they're there. You know, are they looking to, have they got problems with pain? Are they looking to change their body shape? Are they looking to get better at sport? You know, what is it that they're trying to do? Why haven't they been able to do it in the past? We kind of get a backstory for them as, as much as we can. That's the first thing we do with them. So do you design an individual program for every single person or is it very much uh, one size fits all? No, absolutely individual. Exercise is very much like medicine in the fact that the different doses and different types are going to be right for certain people and wrong for certain people. So we've got to get to know what they want to do. That obviously defines a little bit how we train them. And then we get to know like what their body is capable of. Where is it at right now? Is it really tight? Is it overly flexible? Is it weak, strong, stable? What's it doing? And once we know that, then we can create kind of a clear path for them to get what they want. So it's very individual. 
And, and is it important to get the client's buy-in, if I can use that term, into the program? I mean, they must like what you, pre you prepare for them. They must uh, uh, decide to adopt it as their own way forward. Yeah, that's a little bit of a battle at the beginning. You've kind of got to give them almost like an early win so that they get motivated to do it. Because most people that are coming aren't kind of necessarily into health and fitness to start with. So the quicker you can get them a win and get them excited, the, the better the adherence is from there, usually. What I find with, with my clients is that they tell me that the fact that it's in their diary that they're seeing me on a particular date at a particular time actually forces them to do some fitness activities. Otherwise, it might just slip down the priority list for that particular day. Do, do you find the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, firstly, when people haven't been doing this before, it's usually because they haven't got time, they haven't made time for it. So by finding a slot in their diary that they know they have to be at a certain place at a certain time, it starts to build that habit. So it's a good first step for them. And how many clients have you been training recently? Have you, you, you passed the 100 mark yet? Oh, what, in my career? I've no yeah. idea. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm well over 100 different people we've trained, if not multiple hundreds. Great. Matt, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me.